Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where Jeb is hanging over Minmus. Well, actually, to be honest, he is plummeting down quite quickly over Minmus, but you know, the gravity's so light you don't even uh, notice that really. So, um, last episode we got all three of our space astronauts out this far and um, we sent Bob up to high minimum orbit, we sent Bill into low minimum orbit and Jeb, poster boy of the space program, is currently far too high for his radar altitude to tell him how high up our, over Minmus he is. Obviously we're up here doing all science because we're all science all the time. Yeah! Now you notice that I've got a, a small problem with my landing legs. Um, you'll see these two on the back left here, uh, on your screens right now, are far too far uh, round the circle from each other, if you see what I mean. Um, uh, th this was a small production error, as I would, uh, if you remember last episode I placed three of these pods on top of uh, a single rocket, and that was the best we could do. Uh, to get the legs on there, but as we'll find out soon, by the power of SAS, we are able to uh, stand this bad boy up uh, vertically and not have any serious mishaps. Um, you'll notice that one of the legs don't actually put down there. Yeah, I, I even turned my SAS off, and there we go. We have unpowered landing. Yay, Jeb! You did it. So the uh, smallest of EVAs to make sure the, uh, the, the the flight systems work fine and then after accidentally pressing the button again we get back out and go for the uh, on minimum shot of Jeb. There's Jeb, there's the ship, there's Kerbin. Awesome, we'll plant a flag. Now what's Jeb going to write on this flag? Uh, he wrote, I did it! And it's, uh, Jeb was here, all on his own. Because Jeb's a bit of a glory seeker and he's just ignored the fact that those two are up in orbit and they came with him and they were like instrumental on getting him and his equipment out to this particular rock. But you know, PR needs to know that one person did it on his own and uh, for some reason that's the way. Uh, now I did this jump because the, uh, the EVA report said, look how high I could jump and I went, let's look how high we can jump. And it turns out pretty high. So from that jump, we then go and fly him back in, into the pod because that's it. That's enough mucking around. We, we've got some serious work to get going on with here. Uh, the only crew report of this um, uh, of this mission has just been done because for some reason, Bill and Bob, they don't like making crew reports. They, they feel it is a waste of their time. Uh, they have far more important things to do with trying to keep Jeb alive. So now running through standard takeoff procedures, we boost up a bit and then we go sideways. Uh, I need to check my map most of the time for this because Minman has, as I say, very light gravity and I, I don't know how much thrust I need to give it at this point. So um, yeah, I, I point along towards the horizon. I've also noticed that my prograde is far off of the east-west. At the time, it didn't occur to me that it won't be on the east-west because I didn't land on the equator. But whatever, we're, we're up in orbit now. We are quite quite monumentally up in orbit, in fact. And with a small bit of uh, maneuver node workings, I can figure out exactly where we need to send Jeb to get him bang back to to, to curb and orbit. Uh, this is one of my, this is the easiest escape uh, burn that I made of this particular mission. Um, as Jeb will now demonstrate how it's going to be, well, to be honest, he's going to demonstrate in 10 minutes time. So if we just time warp through that and we get close to the burn time, in fact we slightly overshoot, but that's okay, we're, we're so far away that it doesn't really make that much difference. And then we just uh, click on the periapsis and we, we watch it come down. Uh, I start making a few tweaks of direction because I notice that my, my inclination is starting to get a bit, a bit extreme. And as soon as I know that the periapsis is in the in the atmosphere, I stop and I'm like, right, let's make sure these parachutes are out, just in case, just in case I'm not done. Um, double check them all and be like, all right, sweet, let's go deal with the other two. So first off, we go see uh, Bill. He's in low carbon orbit and I, uh, not low carbon orbit, low minimum orbit. And I'm like, right, well, where do we need to go here? If we push out there and we realign our orbit, we should be on target to get ourselves back down and maybe graze the atmosphere so we don't have to use all our thrust, uh, all our fuel to get us down for a safe landing. But once again, thanks to my absolute lack of intuitive knowledge as to how uh, orbital dynamics work, I spend a, an awful long time 
moving about on, on my maneuver node, Give it a little tweak here, a little tweak in that direction, a little tweak in the other direction, and eventually I end up with a periapsis that, that looks roughly like it's going into the right direction. Um, well, it looks like it's going to slam me into the side of Kerbin, to be honest, but that's fine. Um, slamming into the side of a planet at least gets me to the right spot. So I reorientate my ship to make sure I'm facing the right direction, and there, off in the distance, we can see the beautiful jewel that is Kerbin wel welcoming us back. But first, we need to put some effort in to get there. So we carry on warping round, watching the mountains of Minmus pass below us, hoping that none of them reach up as far as our orbit. But we should, we, that should be fine, because we did allow for that when we put ourselves in this orbit. Um, and then, boom, off we go with the thrusting in that particular direction that I uh, set out earlier in my maneuver node. Quick click on the periapsis and brings up the numbers so we can just keep watching. Um, we're down to one million, less than a million, down to hundreds of thousands of meters, and finally, boom, inside the atmosphere. That's all I need. That's good enough for me. We're going to leave Bill there. Um, so out we go and try and find which one, uh, which one Bob is. Now, Bob, uh, poor Bob, th this is Bob's uh, first ever outing at least for this particular version of this particular universe and unfortunately Bob's inexperience combined with the mission coordinator's absolute lack of understanding of the maneuver node has kind of left him in a bit of a quandary. I mean how does one send an inexperienced pilot along a, a very badly planned out space flight when the orbital around the further body is not lined up with the orbit that you want for the inner body to try and get the two planes to intersect and get this little tin that you just happen to have launched into space with the, the smallest of all protections from the cold vacuum that is the, the horrors the horrors of the deep vacuum that are out there but all right so we, we we managed to finally get some something approaching what looks like a reasonable um approach yeah approaching an approach yeah you approach an approach um towards getting us back to curb in orbit and then i'm like oh no Bill is slamming into Kerbin, we best watch that. So all that maneuver note that I just did, that whole like 10 minutes of mucking about, might as well forget about it because it's all just disappeared because I had to switch to another ship. <sighs> In fact, to be honest, this is something that I really wish Squad could um, could implement, some way of keeping the maneuver node loaded with, with a ship when you go off to do something else because I do like to send missions out that have lots of different objectives. Um, and of course, like, I know there was this plugin that gave you the alarm clocks and that, that was quite good, but it really didn't help when you were like trying to plan something out and then have to go do something else and then get back to planning. Uh, and all you've got is a memory that is just a sieve. Uh, and you, you, you know you were boosting somewhere in that direction, but so, so that direction when you're in orbit is not really useful. But anyway, let's have a look at this one, a glorious shot of Bill coming into land. I do believe it's Bill. <coughs> we were on some lovely, um, beautiful aerodynamic flight, and then because I'd popped out the, the uh, parachutes to make sure, just in case I got sidetracked doing something else, we, we got pulled out of that. Uh, yes, it is indeed Bill. And uh, we come racing down. We've, uh, we've lost, oh, 3,000 meters per second orbital velocity, um, which should hopefully mean that we're coming in for a nice safe landing. Uh, obviously, we don't want to be slamming into the floor at 3,000 meters per second. That, that I think, would make a small impact on the spaceship there. Uh, I mean, those landing legs, they are up to, to quite a bit, but um, they're not that good. Right, so uh, parachutes open, and we begin that tedious 500 meter drift down to the floor. And at the very end, I'm just like, uh, seven meters per second is a bit much. Oh, oh, seven meters per second was a bit much, but maybe we should have landed on our feet. But who cares? We're back to Kerbin! Yay! One of three completed. Go, Bill! High five and such forth. Yeah. Right. So now we pop out to where are we? We're with Bob again, <laughs> and once again, I'm just like, eh, what should we do here? Now, looking at this again, I realised that what I should have done is aligned my plane sideways to Kerbin, not try and point it at Kerbin. That was my problem there, because pointing at Kerbin, you see, it's, it does bring me down, but I've got to be going fast. I've got to point straight at Kerbin and nail it, and then hope that the, gravity, that the uh, atmosphere will slow me down, which turns out was a very bad idea, for not least that I need uh, a thousand meters per second delta V, and this ship 
This tiny ship that was meant to go to a tiny rock out in the middle of nowhere doesn't actually have all that much fuel. Uh, as we'll find out soon, I am left millions, millions of meters short of um, scraping into the atmosphere. Uh, and at this point I'm like, oh no, see, no fuel, our orbit is well short of being down. We, we, we've got problems. I, I say millions, it actually turns out it was hundreds of thousands of meters, but it's not good. So at this point, there's a slight edge of panic has uh, entered into my thought process. Like, we are basically the third complete mission into my career, and I'm already looking to miss a Kerbal, to lose a Kerbal in space. Um, so much, uh, panicking so much that I time warped down just to see how far away I was, just to make sure that all the numbers were right. That was also a big mistake, because what I then do is go, right, well, the only fuel I've got left is my EVA. So what, what needs to happen is Bob needs to go out and push the ship. Now, if I'd done this out at Minmus, I, would have, I could have blown on this ship and it would have been good. <coughs> As it happens, I had to get out and push this ship with something along the lines of uh, 12 entire EVA packs just, just full and, I, and I'm pushing and I'm pushing and occasionally I, I lose my place and I'm like oh sort myself out line up um, and, and as I say I have to do this about a dozen times so what I'm gonna do to save your tedium and mine we're, we're gonna observe this first one you can watch this pack running down see basically what my process is here because it's not often you get to see Bob spinning out in space like that uh, that's quite fun. Uh, at this point, I'm like, right, okay, I'm, I'm probably drifting free. I should uh, get back in before I run out of fuel. Um, and I have a look, and I've managed to move the ship an entire three kilometers closer to Kerbin. <laughs> or at least bring my periapsis down three kilometers. So, as I say, after... Now, I cut something along the lines of 40 minutes of me doing this. Uh, normally, Kerbal, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I really enjoy getting out, smashing spaceships up. Uh, this wasn't exactly the most fun of processes, but it had to be done to bring my, my brave, brave space astronauts home. Um, and, and it taught me something. It taught me to take a step back at every opportunity, check my, check my, my orbital dynamics, make sure that I'm not just launching towards something because it's not how space works. If you want to go somewhere, you don't point at it. It's a valuable lesson for us all. Of course, what would have really helped this situation is if the mission coordinators at the beginning of the space program had foreseen this situation, because people being lost in space, or at least mistakes happening in space, do happen, and had in fact sent out a wave of um, autonomous spaceships catcher bots if you will that could have gone out and been st on standby to sit behind any lost ship latch onto it somehow either through the application of um, landing gear or perhaps later on if we can figure out some way of docking two ships together and of course with this docking technology perhaps there'd be a way to uh, launch a ship that could harness the power of the sun to exert a force upon any stranded vessel to bring him down closer bringing his orbit back in line with at least the atmosphere of Kerbal where we could see such heat shocking effects as this Look at it! We're in the atmosphere! Oh, it took so long, but we're there! Which, of course, means we have to wait. And wait a while, because uh, for some reason, bringing my orbit down from the uh, orbit of Juna down to within the orbit of the Moon took one pass within the atmosphere. But for some reason, and I'm really not aware of the mathematics behind this or as I have pointed out many times I don't have much of a gra uh, an, an intuitive grasp of all of dynamics but bringing it down these last few hundreds of no no like millions of meters uh, takes a couple another couple of passes through the atmosphere and if any of you with a slightly more mathematical mindset or indeed people that are just like oh of course it's like that could you please explain it to me um 
I, I don't understand. I really don't. I mean, I know the hard bit is getting away from the surface of Kerbal because that's where gravity is strongest due to, uh, what is it? It's the, 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 the cube law of a distance, something like that. But yeah, it's just, that, that just seems like a bit of a step, bit of a jump. So we've been around the orbit once or are we on our way back up? No, we're on our way back down into the orbit where we get to witness some more heat shock event. Um, and we bring our orbit down a fair way more um, until we reach the point where we are slow enough to come in for a landing we're gonna have to just watch the majestic hills of Kerbin pass beneath us or indeed watch our apoapsis numbers drop as they are so much more elegant and beautiful do you not believe I mean I do do think the elegance of numbers are severely overlooked in a game like this everyone wants to see the landscapes whizzing by and the the beauty of the ship but really honestly all we want to know is how high the ship can go, how fast. Indeed it is said that numbers are indeed the language that the universe uses to express itself, or at least mathematics, which is based upon the number system. Which, if I may be so bold as to point out, we actually all have an intuitive grasp of. Even those of us who think they are not good at maths understand that two is bigger than one and don't have to stop and work out the complex trigonometry of throwing a ball. Indeed, they just go ahead and do it and then go, oh, I can't work out numbers, I can't. But they did it! They threw that ball! They knew where it was going! They recognised that one pile was bigger than another! And with all that, we're back in the atmosphere for the third and hopefully final time because I'm not sure how much random stuff I can come up with anymore. <laughs> so, we're bringing down somewhere around about 40,000 kilometres. 40,000 kilometres? Not indeed. 40,000 metres. 40 kilometres. Um, and we're waiting for our parachutes to open up and provide that final bit of drag to bring our spacecraft down slow enough. Um, now, uh, it's taken me this long to go... I bet Bob wants to watch this, and we spend a good couple of minutes scanning around because uh, this window points in a funny direction and you know, trying to find the surface of a planet. Or, or, or. But there's some mountains whizzing past for those of you who want to see that. There they go. Mountains and lakes and horizon and stars and stuff. Uh, I was really waiting for the, uh, the, the, the shock um, heating to come into effect just like this, and hopefully I will be going back within to, to witness it. But I don't see it. I, I I think maybe we've slowed down just a little bit too much now. Uh, it, it is a shame. Oh, there is a a smallest smidgen of orange going across our window. Uh, it must be a terrifying experience for for the Kerbals on board. Well, for Bob on board, uh, witnessing flame race past like that. And in uh, indeed, if I was to ever get up into space, it would be one of the things that I really, really want to watch. Is some sort of like the, what the heating going past the window, or indeed we can't look through the window. I should hope the provider has uh, allowed for this and set up some sort of, if not third-person camera, if you understand my terminology, a third-person camera, some sort of external camera, perhaps. Point pointing backwards so we can watch, I don't know, what comes off the back of the heat effect like that. I don't know, perhaps I should go and review some sort of uh, incoming shuttle footage and, and see if anything is, like, do, does that fire produce smoke? Is it fire? I mean, do, do the do the uh, heat tile shield things on the bottom of, or on the bottom of the space shuttle that was, oh, sad moment, um, do they actually burn away and throw out sort of burnt products behind them? I have no idea, but it's a very interesting question and uh, hopefully I'll put an answer for you in the description. So we're coming down for the far last uh, couple of kilometres, indeed we're down at uh, two kilometres and I'm starting to slow down my time acceleration waiting for my parachutes to open, like that. Awesome, and then again the tedium of the last th uh, 500 um, meter drop. Uh, though Bob does seem to be enjoying himself, I should imagine that he's absolutely ecstatic to be back on Kerbal after the threat of uh, indeed being lost in space. So with that done, we're going to get back to Jeb because Jeb is the last one to bring home, <coughs> and I do believe the easiest to bring home. Um, We've got a crew report already done, so we'll just leave that be, and we will uh, time warp down into the atmosphere. Bang, there we are. Jeb is obviously showing his experience here. Uh, just He took off from Mimus with the uh, utmost of ease. He pointed himself at Kerbal with the utmost of ease. And this landing, well, he's just coming screaming in with the 
up most of these parachutes have popped because again that was just the uh, little backup for myself to make sure that uh in case i wasn't watching though i would like to make a uh, a test flight at some point where i can switch focus to another ship and see whether uh the ship that i've already told to land with parachutes actually deploys parachutes where it just smashes into the planet but that's another vehicle uh, another vehicle another program episode video ha oh. Good job, Steve. But thank you very much for joining for this adventure. This is indeed the end of the mission. We earned... Oh, it was quite a lot of science. I can't... Uh, I don't know exactly how much because these guys are still on my map. We will start next episode with me... Um, recovering these vehicles, uh, bringing in all the science, buying in new bits and planning our next trip. Uh, I think our next trip, as we have now done Kerbal, the Mun and uh, Minmus, will probably be either Ike or Eve. Uh, Ike or Gilly, I'm, I'm not sure which one, and if you have any suggestions, please do drop me a comment in the box below. But as I say, thank you very much for joining me for this triple adventure, and I will see you next time. Bye!